Okay, so we're going to get uh, going on assignment number four here. Um, I've kind of opened up and named a project, last name, first name, assignment number four, like we've done for the rest of these things. So uh, I also expanded this main form a bit, but um, we're going to get going on kind of learning something about methods now. Um, and so we're going to first of all grab some text boxes. So let's just make another scroll here. Uh, and just grab some text boxes. I'm just going to call this one um, from the properties here. Text numbers one. And then I can actually just copy and paste these actually. Paste. And I'll just rename this text. Numbers two, open in numbers or number number. Get rid of the S there. And then again, I'll just paste here. So I have three uh, just basic text boxes there. Text numbers number three. Uh, simple stuff. And then uh, I'm gonna grab also a label. Uh, that I'm gonna use to display. Uh, a maximum value. What our application is actually going to do is it's going to be call this label maximum. Um, between those three numbers, our program is going to find the one with the maximum value. So text maximum value, we'll call that. I called that label maximum. And then we'll have, I'm just going to move this over, kind of through the center of this a little bit. And then we're going to have a button that we're going to press for our event. So, a button there. I'll call this button max. Okay, and so from here, um, I'll just kind of change that label as well. There we go. So that makes sense. Um, from here, we're just going to click in and we'll get to that button right away. Now, from within the button, uh, and you can see by default, as soon as I click that, it goes to the button click event. Uh, inside here, we need to first of all start out by uh, initializing an integer array. And so I'm going to go int square brackets and we'll call this box numbers. And equals new int and we're gonna have a, a value of three. It's gonna have just three three about three text boxes so we're just gonna have three numbers in our array. I'll initialize these numbers uh, actually right away we're just gonna grab those uh, text box numbers and, uh, and from we're going to just go directly to taking um, the value of those text boxes and putting it in here. So the first uh, integer in that array is uh, box number 0 equals, and we'll just go int dot parse, and we're going to grab that text number 1 dot text, and quickly that'll allow me to grab that, and I'm just going to copy and paste it save us some time here. Um, it's a fairly long lesson this time around, so save us watching me type by just doing those short little modifications. Uh, a little gotcha here though, just make sure, remember, integers start with zero, so they don't quite match your number-wise, do they, when you look at this. Uh, box number one is actually text number two box number two is text number three just to make sure we have those in place and correct so make sure you get that right when you're doing that part so that's just going to grab um, those text box numbers on that button click so that's pretty straightforward now we're going to get into declaring a method now a methods a chunk of reusable code um, that we can use over and over and over throughout uh, without 
You can really use it in one line, and we're going to use it in one line down here, but uh, first of all, we need to make it. So I'm just going to go up here and say, and this is going to be a public method. You don't have to be. Uh, so I'm going to go public int, since so it's a return value that my method's going to have. You can have void, and it can return nothing, and that's fine, but we're not doing that for now. We're going to call this max. It's going to get the maximum value. And it's going to take, it's going to be a little bit different. Usually, an argument um, that a method will take is usually like an integer or a string or something. We're going to actually give it an array. So we're going to go int and array, and we're just going to call it numbers. And that's just so that that argument matches um, our array down here that we're going to put in there. It's going to substitute in for this array here. So. Um, you don't know too much about that right now, but basically a method declared can have no arguments in here. If it does have arguments, it can have multiple arguments and they can be separated by commas or whatever. So um, in this case, whatever's inside these brackets here is an argument for this method. Okay, and it allows us to substitute in outside numbers into those kind of the method or the function there so that it works. Uh, inside here, though, I'm going to have another thing. I'm just going to call another integer called maximum. And I'm going to set its value to 0. Okay, we're going to assume that our number is going to be entered above 0. So, um, And then down at the bottom, we're going to return that maximum. Um, because I told that this was going to be need. Um, up here, I stated that it was going to return an integer. So I need to return one. Now, that's just the setup of this um, method. Beyond that, I need to actually do some work in here. So we're going to use a for loop like we did last lesson. For, and I'm going to have another integer i that's going to, I'm going to set to 0. Um, and so that I need to initiate that because it's going to be what tells me how many times to loop. Now, my condition for how many times it's going to loop is it's going to be while i is greater than, or less than, sorry. Um, we're going to say whatever my array that comes in, numbers dot length. Now this is part of the dot net framework that that numbers is referring to this this integer array here, and we can pull the length. Uh, it's built into the net framework. We can pull the length of that array. So the length of my array down is going to be three when I put this one in. So that's going to make sense. That's what I want to do. And then again, we're going to go i plus plus, which increments that i values every time it loops. Okay, A minus minus would decrement, so it would move down the number. This adds one. So it's the same as going i equals i plus one. Okay, But it's shorthand to do that plus plus. Okay, And then we want to have brackets for our for loop. And inside there, that this is where it's a little bit complicated. You're gonna have to maybe take a look at this a couple times. But what we're gonna do inside here is we're gonna go if so if um, if our uh, well, we're gonna say numbers, and we're gonna say you know how can I get that? F how can I com every time I go through grab a different one of those array numbers? Well, you know if I set this to i first time it's going to be 0 which is what I want. The second time it's going to be 1 which is what I want. The third time it's going to be 2 which is what I want. So if I use that i here inside here it's going to grab me the, the first number the first time through, second number, second time through, third number, third time through. So that's going to make a lot of sense. So if i is greater than maximum. Okay so our maximum we set here. If i is greater than that Okay, what we want to do is we want to say, well, maximum needs to equal numbers i, which makes sense. We want that to say, well, if it's bigger, it's the new maximum. It becomes a new maximum. Okay, and then it's going to loop through and check the next number. If that's greater than maximum, it's going to be the new maximum. So that's going to get it find us the max, uh, and that's going to do what we need to do within our function. So take a look at this, see if you can understand that logic. It's really important that you're able to do that and then understand that this is all within this function. 
Now to actually use the function down here, um, I will actually want to show that function in as a string, right, in my label. And so if I if I go label maximum, well, the text value is a string. So I can grab that max value. And to get, get the max value, so I'm going to say max. And then the argument it takes is, is that array. I can see it's an integer array. Well, this is the integer array I wanted to use. So it's box numbers. See how it substitutes in for that. Now the problem is, is that I need this to go to a string if I want to be able to use it. And so, yeah, what basically I'm doing, I'm taking this integer value here, box numbers, I'm going to display it as a string. So this should work now, okay, to display in my text. Now, like I said, it's a little complicated. This is an integer, I'm converting it back to a string. It's an integer because that's what I asked it to return here, it was an integer up here. Okay, so you're gonna maybe have to take a look at this a little bit, but let's let's see if we run and see if we are error free here. Uh, the only thing that could cause us maybe in a later let I might have to do a little side note on error handling, but obviously when I'm trying to int parse here, if there's not a number there, that's probably gonna throw an exception. But let's take a look at where we're at um, when we run this program. Okay, so I'm gonna put a number in here, two, seven. And if I click get max, well, it found 7. Well, 7 is the maximum number. That makes sense. Well, let's go 9 here and see what happens. 9. So it's finding the max just like we asked it to do. Okay, so good stuff. Uh, that's going to be part one of this lesson. We're going to learn how to, we can even organize this even better. The benefit of what we just did here is that now in this one line of code here, I can reuse this chunk of code here throughout the rest of my class here. So you can see how if I needed to find the maximum over and over in my program, as my complex program, then I could do that in now one line of code. So that's, that's pretty cool and pretty powerful uh, that we can do that over and over and I can continue to do that, but we don't need to. So that's it for part one. Uh, next time we're going to get into um, kind of splitting things up more so in class wise. Bye. Okay. Uh.